Michael with NCY Store, we're continuing on where we left off. We actually found out that was much better constant power directly from the four prongs that was going to the ignition. So we were able to tap the wires here. And I didn't realize that actually that wasn't just a black wire, it was a black and white wire. Uh, so that wasn't actually our ground wire. So we're still trying to figure that one out. Um, we have a total of five wires configured. So if we got our positive here, our battery constant is from an ignition positive. As you see there, it's going to the red with red pretty much. And then our green one is our ground from our ignition uh, right here. And we tapped it into our black wire coming from our alarm harness here. And then we also have those two yellow wires we were talking about. We kept it very simple. We just tapped, not the green side of this, but we tapped the blue side of this wire for one for the left and one for the right each. Uh, yellow wire pretty much uh, controls a series of the uh, front and rear signal lights. And then as far as the other one, we tapped it right there. You can see here's the same thing. That's just for the left-hand side. We tapped it not on the green wire part, but on the green wire part. And that's what's going to the harness right now. And we're thinking that our blue wire for our Kickstarter is somewhere here. You can see how it runs into the switch button here, right? We left it on or left it off. It doesn't matter. And we have the key still. We can take the key out. And we want to be able to see if we can start the bike having it actually just start itself. But if you can see here, I'm going to push the alarm button. Uh, got two keys here. Let me just take one out of my pocket. Okay, you can see here it works. The lights and everything was triggered. I'm going to go ahead and push. By the way, it works really far too. I'm going to hit the arm button. See that right there? I'm going to hit the disarm button. It trips twice. And also you can see the rear one also lights up as well. So everything is working, the lights and everything. That wasn't hard to do at all. Uh, thanks to uh, APM help, big help there. I'm going to hit the arm button. You can see here my LED both lights up right there. I'm going to hit the disarm button. And then I'm going to hit the, it's going to be hard, but it's going to be, here it goes. This is like the siren button for emergency. It's going to go ahead and start spinning. That's how it looks like when it flies up. It's very loud. It's a little die on zone. I'm not pushing the button or anything. Uh, by the way, I can still control it pretty much from afar. So if I was to walk across the street, there we go. I'll turn it off. But yeah, so we got everything wired right. We're just trying to figure out the ignition start system here. So, I mean, we can lock it, unlock it, and then this is supposed to start when you push one time, and then you have three seconds to push it again. And it should start the bike, but it's not doing it right now. So we're going to work on that. And uh, thanks to APM's help, he's been constantly sending back his alarm. There we go. Turn it off. Okay, so that's where we're at right now. We're just trying to figure out all the wiring harness again. Again, this is the wires coming from, you can see here where the push button is. And it's kind of weird because it's kind of mixed. So if you look at it, it's green. That's our ground wire. And then we have a black and white one there you can see. Okay, we have to, and then it comes to black and white here as well. And then the yellow and red one comes to the yellow and red one here on this side. That's where we put our blue uh, auto start wire here. We put there, our kill switch is off. Even when we had it on, I can, look, I'll show you, I'll, I'll leave it on. And I'll try to put the start button on here. I'll have to unlock it first to make sure. Push this one time, push it again, hold it down. See, it triggers our brake, or somewhat, somewhat of a brake light, there we go. Somewhat of a brake light, we push it, but nothing starts. So let me just go ahead and turn it off. Turn off the kill switch. Come around here. I took this off. I put a tie strap here so it gives a little bit more support. Because sometimes I take it for a spin test drive without the, the cluster gauge. We still haven't put that on there yet. But if you can look at it, this is for the right hand side uh, signal lights. How we wired it. We just tapped it. It's a little different color. But you can see anything that's green we avoid. We just tap the yellow wire to give it a pulse of uh, a voltage to burst the wires. I mean to burst the um, signal. So you can see here, this is for our right hand side. You can see I put a little R upside down, but you can see it. And the green wire is right here on the other side of it. The same thing I did to this one. I just pretty much grabbed the yellow wires. Let's see if I can see it from here. There you go. So I want to yank it out. I, I, I gave it a good shove in there. Let's see, you can see it. There we go. See that one? There's a green wire and then there's orange wire. We tapped the orange wire. We didn't tap the green wire because that's already it's already grounded, so we don't need to double ground it. That wouldn't give us any path of electricity flow. So the yellow wires were simple. We figured that out. And now we're trying to figure out right here. 
The orange wire is going to a solid black wire. I believe that is our ignition because when we tested it out for 12 volts, when we turn our ignition, it gave us the reading of 13, whatever the battery reading is. But when we turn it off in the off position, it didn't give us that reading. So that's how we know that's our ignition. And I'll show you what I mean here. Put that on there. Take our meter. We're gonna set it to volts. Okay, there we go. These I'm gonna probe a ground. Let's get a solid ground here. So we know that green wire is ground. So let me go and probe that green wire here. Now it's gonna come, everything else is gonna come loose a little bit. That's okay, we're just testing right now. Okay, let me get some alligator clips, it'd be so much easier. There we go, here's our alligator clip. Okay, we're just gonna ground it to the frame of the scooter. I don't know why they call it alligator clip, like wrestling an alligator. Where was the other end of that one? There we go, it's gonna bite. There we go, this is one of my ground blocks here that I made. Regretted it because we found a better ground right there on the ignition right here. We could actually put it on the bolt too, but that's fine, we're here already. Okay, so now we're gonna do here, we got no voltage right now during the middle of bolts. Okay, so we're gonna probe this right here. We're gonna probe that black. It's black and white stripe, you know, don't let it fool you again, it's like a skunk hidden. So let me see, I'll show you, see that? There's a white stripe right there. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave my probe in here. Take my meter here so it won't fall. Okay, let's see if I can leave my probe in there. I gotta get the probe, but also have contact, not just loose. Okay, I think this is right there. My probe is stuck in there. Okay, you see here it says zeroed out. But the minute I go ahead and turn this into on position, just the on position only, not even starting scooter yet. Okay, now when I actually hit the, let's see if I hit the start button and see what happens, ready? Okay, I'll turn on my kill switch. Might not have any good contact. Uh, oh, actually, I apologize, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I probed the wrong one. I probed the one with the white stripe. It's actually the solid black one. The solid black one is actually our ignition wire. And that's the one we put the orange wire to it. Sorry about that. Let me go ahead and show you again. Turn off the key. Okay, sorry about that. I got my, myself confused here. Yeah, that that black and striped wire, we still haven't found out what's what's it, uh, you know, if it's gonna be tapped to or not. But we're talking about the orange wire right now. That's, see there it goes? That's a solid black wire right here. That's the one we're going after. If you look at it, that's our ignition wire. So we're gonna go ahead and put the probe in here. You can see here it reads millivolts. Okay, the minute I actually just turn the key on, and you look down back, the reading should change, but let's see what's going on. Okay, there we go. It wasn't a good contact, sorry about that. See, I can force it in there now, you can see the contacts. Okay, so the minute I actually have the key on the on position, my meter here, it will read. Let me see if I can stabilize this probe, that way you can really get a good Maybe go underneath or go on the bottom a little bit. There you go. This might work. Okay, so you can see here It's 13.32 volts right now. That's what my battery is reading and it's coming from that ignition wire But the minute I turn the key off It drops it's meaningless right now, so you can see here Okay, so let me go ahead and back to probing it. Everything's just dropping on me. Okay, here we go. We're just trying. At, we're just testing this wire right now. Okay, so you can see here, I got my positive probe in there. Got my positive probe not on the black with white stripes. I got it on the solid, the solid black one right there. That first black wire you see solid. Okay, and I have my ground right here. It's connected to my meter. Okay, you can see here it's reading millivolts. Okay, you see that millivolts there? Okay, now the minute I turn my key on, I'm gonna try to do it one hand here. Okay, the minute I turn my key on, you can see it jump. See, there you go, see it jumped. So that's how you know that's one's actually your ignition wire. And from the wiring diagram, what it says, it looks like it's supposed to go to that ignition wire. I'm looking at the wiring diagram again right here. That right there. Orange wire goes to your ignition switch. 
So you can see they're on top. And actually we're using this configuration battery ignition type. But they're almost similar. And then if you look at the pink wire, it, it says right here it goes to the black and white wire. Almost like this is written for our diagram for a scooter. We're not too sure. See how it says that, that the pink wire goes to like sort of a black. Let me get a better resolution here. See that right there? The pink wire goes to the black and white wire. And of course you have your ground and then your battery positive. Your ground is green, which is correct. Ours is the same as green color. So everything here on that ignition switch right there seems so much matching ours. Uh, but we just didn't put the pink wire inside the, um, the skunk one. Yeah, I call it skunk wire. It's the solid black with the white stripe. But we did put the orange one wire in there. So, so that's how you could tell that is pretty much your uh, ignition wire. If you turn on the key, you get voltage. So. Right now it's in the millivolts because it's not reading nothing. So let me go and turn back on the key again. That way you can see it onto the on position. There it goes. See, it's got 13.31 volts. So that's it. That's it. What we have so far, we're working on seeing what's going to install it. Uh, it has something maybe to do with the gray wire. We tied the gray and pink wire together. But more than likely, I think maybe the pink wire needs to go back in that skunk one right there. So I could put it back in there. But then I have the gray wire, which I need to isolate what that one does. So... See the gray wire here, it just gives right here black and yellow wire to CDI uh, switch kill. Blue and yellow wire. Oh, sorry, you can't see it. So blue and yellow wire, CDI switch kill. See, for remote start, optional. That's what we got it for mainly, just the remote start. But um, here we go. So the gray wire is to the blue and yellow. I don't see any blue and yellow. Blue and yellow. And again, these color codes are not really standard, so you can't take it for certain. But so we're going to leave it the way it is right now. Uh, APM, he's helping me out. He's recommending that I just tie the gray and pink together and tap the orange one. I'm going to do it for you here while everything's on. Tap the orange one to the solid black one of the ignition. This is it's the ignition wire. My connections are not the greatest, but I can see when it hooks. I want to make sure I pull it back to make sure it has contact. Then my red wire from the alarm harness as well is going to the red wire here. Oh boy, startled me there. Okay, my ground is good. That means I have ground. That's why it's actually making a, a complete circuit. Okay, let me pull it back. Make sure it's con contact. Okay, you want to make sure it also has contact. Just go and get the remote control and push it. There you go. By the way, the remote control works fantastic. I'm just going to push the button. There it goes. So it's locking. So when I push it, you can see it blinks. So everything is fine, the lights and everything, we got that part done. And you can see the running lights actually even come on. So we're gonna turn it off. We don't want the running lights too much. Oh, because we have the key on the. So let me just take out the key completely out. Okay, we're gonna hit the switch again. See, that's to lock it. To unlock it makes a double beep. And then normally when you unlock it, you can push this once and then push this twice and hold on to it. And it should kick over or it should start. I mean, if the blue wire is supposed to be for the auto start, did the blue wire drop too as well? No, it's still there, see? That's the blue wire there coming from the alarm and we tapped it to the black and white. Black and white, didn't it say something about black and white here earlier? Which wire was supposed to go to the black and white? <sighs> the pink wire? Hmm. The pink wire went to the black and white ignition, that's fine. But the gray wire here is supposed to go to the blue and yellow. Is there a blue and yellow here? I don't see a blue and yellow. That blue one's ours, and then that there's a white and black, and then there's sort of a red and red and yellow. And I did try to fit this one into the red and yellow, and I blew a fuse. And it's funny because uh, this fuse actually uh, makes a tick 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 noise. So I'm thinking, whoa, maybe something new is trying to start it, but it wasn't. It was actually the fuse telling me it's bad. And I did do a continuity test on it. It was an open fuse. So, so that we're on our third fuse now. The original fuse popped right away. It was a, there were 15 amp fuses. So here's the other one right here. See, they're pretty bad. <laughs> so there we go, that one's open. You can't even tell really. But it is open because I took a continuity test to it. You can see probably maybe now it's open. Yeah, you can't even tell it's open, but it made a tip 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 noise. This one probably is, you could tell, is open. Because we ran, the first time we tried this attempt, we ran, there we go, you can tell, this one's definitely open. 
The first time we tried this attempt, we ran actually this blue wire here. We ran it straight to the solenoid power of the starter motor. And when we um, hit it, it went, poof, it went, and then, uh, it just, the fuse didn't do anything, not like a firecracker or anything, but we knew it was gone. So it has a built-in line fuse for the alarm, which is pretty cool and convenient. So now it's just a matter of actually, um, this alarm goes a long distance too, right away. I actually ran across the street and I hit it and I was able to be in the corner across because we live in the corner too. But I, I literally went all the way to the corner and I still was able to hit it. That was quite amazing. Oh, that's a long, sorry. So I armed it. So that's it, that's what we're working on now.